cold. This is a 12 inch Mayrath grain auger or elevator or screw conveyor or whatever you want to call it. It has a big 15 horsepower three phase electric motor. The motor turns, but the screw inside the tube does not turn. The good news is this should be a pretty easy diagnosis. I am not an expert about bearings and bushings, but I feel reasonably qualified to say that ain't good. I think this was the start of the problems, but unfortunately it is not the end. So I think the, the friction just got so high from that worn out bushing that it sheared the key in the drive shaft here. So you might not be able to see, but the keyway in the shaft is here. The keyway in the coupling is here. So that thing has sheared off and spun about 90 degrees. I don't know how chewed up it is in there. I can see it's kind of sloppy. So we're gonna have to address that. I see quite a bit of oil. There must be a chain or some gears inside that cover. I think we better get it down and have a look inside there. I kind of think there should be some oil in there. It smells like gear lube. So that's probably a problem too. I think we better open that up. Good call on the drain pan. Pretty milky, nasty looking stuff. Okay, well that answers that. That's a big old chain. I think the top end's okay. It leaks a bit of oil, but the chain's good, the sprockets are good. The bearings are good. I think our next step is to get a look at this coupling. Pretty sure the coupling is chewed up, but I wanna separate this and see how badly damaged the shaft is. Not sure what holds that in place. There's gotta be a shoulder in the middle to keep that thing from moving around. I think we can just take these bolts loose and slide the whole motor gearbox, the whole kit and caboodle down the tube. But that thing's pretty beefy. So I think we better hook onto that eye bolt with the gantry crane just to keep the whole thing from doing a barrel roll. Not without a fight.
That's what's left of the key. When it let go, it made a big mess. The shaft's all chewed up, the coupling's all chewed up. The coupling is also seized on the shaft. So we got some more work to do. I think we better go ahead and tear that shaft out. It goes pretty much all the way to the top. And then I guess we've got some options. We could build it up, we could cut it off and shorten it, or we could replace it. And then the coupling, we'll have to see if we can get a puller on that and get it off there. I don't know if it's a press fit or, I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite like this. There's no set screws, there's no pins. I don't know what's supposed to hold that in place other than friction and gravity. This is a little janky, but I couldn't think of anything better. Come on. I don't know if she's coming off there. We can try heating it, but I don't want to screw up the gearbox. Melt the seals and the bangs and stuff. a lot of tension. I think it's moving very slightly. Let's try some gentle heat. I tried asking nicely and we didn't get very far, so we're doing it the hard way. All right, now well, it's starting to close up on me. Ha, ha, ha. 
That's what she needed. There. Simple. Nothing to it. Little hickey there from my, my puller, but that should clean up just fine. Well, if we didn't need a new one before, we certainly do now. I guess we need some kind of a plan. Lots of options. We could try to buy a new shaft from Mayrath. I'm sure they're not gonna have one on the shelf, but they could probably make one for us. I don't know how long that would take or how much that would cost. We could make our own shaft. This thing is like 14 and a half feet long. It's about, what would that be? Four meters, four and a half meters, something like that. So it's longer than a normal section of cold rolled inch and a quarter steel. But you can buy steel shafting up to 20 foot. Again, I don't know what that would cost or how long that would take. Our other option would be to cut it off and put on, put on an extension, either by welding or by using another coupling. Or the last option would be to try to build this up and machine it down and basically just reuse this shaft. That's probably the most difficult thing to do, but I think it might be the best thing to do. But we could try it. I mean, we don't have much to lose. Worst case scenario, I don't get it right and I still have to cut it off and add an extension or, or build a new one. So let's give it a shot. There's the business end. Check out this confidence inspiring setup. We've got a rigid pipe vise clamped on one of the bearings, clamped on an adjustable angle plate, clamped to a steel workbench. I mean, there's janky setups and then there's whatever this is. So we're gonna take things real slow. I'm gonna use high speed steel tools and we're going to keep it probably under 100 rpm here we go oh look how safe that is it does have a pretty good death wobble all right well we'll keep an eye on that
this is almost too good. Nice tight fit. Pretty decent surface finish. I mean, for mild steel that's been hand welded with a MIG welder. Little undercut there at the end of the weld, you can't really avoid that. But otherwise, there are no inclusions or imperfections. I mean, it's, it's actually better than new because the shaft is pretty undersized. It's about eight thousandths undersized. So the fit was never as good as what we just made. Okay, let's cut a keyway. myself with the hammer the handiest and the most dangerous tool in the shop that'll work yeah I joke around about safety but injuries are pretty much inevitable in the shop yeah it's good to have a first aid kit around like it never happened I cut some new keys this should just slide together. This should just slide together. And yeah, must have mushroomed it a little bit when I was beating on it. Stand by. Let's try this again. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. Go hard the whole way. I think that's far enough. I think we better do something about this. The, uh, the clearance is a little bit excessive. It's possible 
this got hot enough to melt all the paint, but I think it's more likely that this has been fixed before, maybe several times before. This is a, a pretty common failure point. I think maybe the best thing to do is just try to grind through this weld or as much of it as we can and see if we can chisel that bushing out and then we'll try to remove this stub shaft. Got a feeling it's going to be wedged in there pretty good. It's not bronze. Cast iron, maybe? Okay, I think the weight of the auger itself is holding the bushing in. I gotta pick that up. I tried asking nicely. Yeah, there's some yummy stuff. It smells as good as it looks. Wait till we start welding. I've got a feeling that that shaft is not gonna come out of there. I loosened the straps on this bottom funnel section. I think it just slides right off the end. Max is doing his ASPCA commercial tryouts.
Keen observers may have noticed there are now two 5 8 holes instead of one. Got myself in a classic measure once, cut twice scenario. I won't tell if you don't. Just made it. I can help you when I'm done. Perfect. That's an oil light bronze bushing, and they're pretty nice to work with. The press fit is built into the bushing, so all you have to do is bore the housing to nominal, in this case, two and a half inches. And the bushing is two and a half thousandths oversize, which gives you the perfect press fit. And then the inside bore is three thousandths oversize, and it should shrink when you press the bushing in. But sometimes you do have to size these bushings. You have to bore the inside out just a little bit to get the clearance that you want. That'll work. Hopefully when I weld it, it doesn't shrink down even further and try to bind up, but I think we'll be okay. Just nothing that smells quite like rotting corn. I don't even know how to describe it. 
You just have to experience it for yourself. Still can't reach it. Alright. That'll do it. Uh, you got a little problem. But it's too close. The end of the auger is actually hitting the bolts that hold the little trap door in the bottom. So I think I just got to move this whole funnel section down a little bit. I don't know if I can, I think I got a little bit of wiggle room. That'll work. It's got a little bit of a tight spot, but it'll self-correct. Don't worry. That all looks fine to me. The only problem I see is it's missing a cotter pin from the master link. Don't know how that happened, but we'll go ahead and replace it. Okay. These bearings have grease zerks, so I'm gonna give them a little shot of grease. It's kind of an odd setup, if I'm being honest, but I guess it's a grain auger, not a space shuttle.
I think we're done. That didn't go too badly. A lot of work, but I anticipated that. That's kind of why I put it off for so long. I got about 12 hours in this job, and it's just difficult to find that much time to work on a single project, especially one that takes up this much space. I would love to show it in action, but we're experiencing our second major blizzard of the week. School is closed, everything is shut down, so I think that's where we're going to leave it. Thanks for watching. One more thing, because I know I'll get a million comments about it. No, there is no grease cirque in this bushing. There was no grease cirque in the original bushing. I did not add one. I don't think it would make any difference if I did. These things are just basically designed to wear out. That's the nature of the beast. Grain dust is extremely abrasive. If we add grease to it, it might actually make it worse because the grain dust mixes with the grease and it becomes this kind of abrasive lapping compound and it could actually accelerate the wear. So we're going to duplicate what was there originally and just accept the fact that eventually this will wear out again. I don't know how much snow we've actually gotten. It's hard to tell because it's drifted so bad. I would say at least 12 inches, maybe up to 15 inches. And we're supposed to get another five tonight. So yeah, we've had a pretty mild winter so far, but it finally self-corrected.